Welcome back to PSC Stack Byte. Today, we keep on talking about MSIL, the Microsoft Authentication Library, which is a library that helps developers to acquire tokens to consume the Microsoft Graph, uh, first of all, as well as any other API registered in Azure Active Directory. MSIL is available for multiple development platforms and languages like uh, .NET, uh, uh, JavaScript and TypeScript, uh, all the macOS and Android uh, native app uh, platforms and stuff like that. And today I want to talk with you about how you can use the confidential client application to consume MSIL and to get an access token in order to consume backend APIs either using the on the alt flow or the app only flow or the authorization code flow, which are the uh, flows available in MSIL when you want to use the confidential model, which is called confidential because uh, you leverage on a information on a secret like the client secret on an H509 certificate in order to acquire a token in the backend API or web application or service that you are developing and where you are using the confidential client application type. So let's move to the demo environment and let's see how to do that in practice. Let's start from the Azure Active Directory Management Portal and here we will have to register an application in order to use MSIL with the confidential client application. You will have to go under App Registrations, and here actually I already registered an application, so I will show you the result. I have an MSIL Confidential Client Demo, which I registered just by clicking on the plus new registration command right here. So my Confidential Client application is configured to have in the API permission section the permission to read all of the sites. So I click on Add a Permission, Microsoft Graph, Application permission, because I want to show you how to use an application-only token retrieved through MSIL Confidential Client Application. And I simply search for Scythe, and here we see I have the pre-selected permission, Scythe.read.all. Moreover, I granted the permissions at tenant level with a, a global tenant admin account, and in the certificate and secrets, I registered a new client secret. You simply need to click on this button to provide a name and to choose an expired date for your new shared secret. Remember to copy the value of the shared secret because you will be able to see that one if and only if you create it from scratch. And once you have created it and you have got its value, you will not be able anymore to get it back. Moreover, we need to copy the client ID and the tenant ID because this will be information we will use in the application that I'm going to show you. And here is the application. Of course, here, for the sake of simplicity, I created a static iConfidential client application type, which will be the type we are looking for in order to use the confidential client application. And I registered a static strings, a client ID, a client secret, which I will delete right after the recording, and a tenant ID, so that I can build an authority which is based on the login Microsoft and the ID of the target tenant. Of course, in a real application, these settings will be in the app settings JSON file or in the configuration settings of your Azure hosting platform. Then, uh, using the confidential client application builder type provided by MSAL, I can create a new confidential client based on the client ID of my application with the authority that we just defined right here and with the client secret, or if you like, and I would say it is even better, you can use a certificate for a better security so that you will be able, for example, to store the certificate in Azure Key Vault or in a safe, certi safe certificate store. So once I've done that, I build the confidential client application through the builder and I am able to use it. In order to use it, I need to define a set of permission scopes. And when you want to retrieve an access token for an application only access token, so in the name of no user, you will have to provide the dot default value for the permission scope. As such, I simply say that I want to use my confidential client object. I want to acquire a token for client. I provide the scopes and I execute asynchronously the request. And I will get back an access token, which I will show in the UI of this console sample application. And then using the HTTP client of .NET, I simply make a request to access the root site of my SharePoint Online tenant and I provide as a bare access token in the authorization header of my HTTP request the access token that I retrieved using MSAL. And that's it. Then I can send the request and I can get back the result. So let me play this application and let me show you how it behaves. So F5, 
Here you can see the console application output. Let me copy the content of the access token that we just got through MSAL from Azure Active Directory. And if I go to jwtle or jot.ms, I can paste the value of my access token and see what's inside. And here we can see that this is an access token for the Microsoft Graph, which is the audience I'm targeting. I got back a, uh, an access token with the site.read.all permission scope, which is the one I declared in the configuration in Azure Active Directory, and which I retrieved through the dot .default request of the scope in my acquire token request. And I can see that this is an access token for my application with my client ID and with no user in the uh, definition of the access token because this is an application only in the name of no users. And that's it. Simple as that. You can consume a backend API like Maxograph with an app-only access token retrieved using MSAL. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. And remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.